hits the ocean. How quickly does that tsunami move, and what is the force behind it? It is a speed of about 400 to 500 miles per hour, just like a jet uh, would take about 9 to 12 hours from Japan to here. That's the time of a flight, right. so that gives you an idea. But it is a function of depth of the ocean. So that speed is only at the deep ocean. When it approaches the shallower coastline, then it slows down. But the energy keeps pushing. So it, it is slower but becomes higher. And so when a tsunami runs ashore, it gains height as it approaches the shore, and that's what makes that well, Let's put up that second video in the sequence that we had in the, early in the show, and you can just see as it just crushes the houses in front of it, that's exactly yeah. what you're describing. Yeah. But here's what I'm mystified by. How does it maintain that energy over the thousands of miles? Now, this footage is, it didn't go as far from the epicenter to the Japanese coast, which was not such a great distance. But from the epicenter to the U.S. coastline, it covered thousands of miles. Why doesn't that energy dissipate? It's like a domino effect. You push the first stone, and it pushes the next, and it goes on. And as long as there's water, it keeps running. Does it gain power? Does it lose power? No, it spreads out the power from a more focused area like in Japan itself to the entire Pacific Basin. And so it loses somewhat in energy, and that's why you didn't have so high a tsunami run up in Hawaii or in Oregon and California. So if we had a 30-foot wave when it went ashore in Japan, which is what we were seeing in yeah. that, that yeah. devastating video, by the time it got to California, it was down to about three to four feet. That's right. Yeah. So over the thousands of miles, it did diminish that much. Yes, but if there would be one canal going from Japan to California, it would be almost as high in California. It's the spreading out over the entire shorelines of the entire Pacific. Okay, now, predictability. This is what I think terrifies people. Now they've seen this footage. They have, we've lived through this. We hope folks, some have lost their lives, of course. What do we know about the likelihood that there will be aftershocks that will affect Japan or something along many of the fault lines near California that triggers something similar to this? Well, California is lucky because it's a strike-slip fault that doesn't make so much uh, tsunamis, except if such an earthquake sets off a submarine landslide. That could even in California. Okay, okay. you're talking with language I don't understand. What does that mean? That means the ground shakes and there are loose soils on the bottom of the coast in California, and they can send off like an avalanche, but in the water. And that can offset a tsunami. I see. So it's sort of like uh, a, 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 you know, shock absorbers is what you're saying. No, 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 no. It's more, think right. of this an avalanche. This is why I became a lawyer, not a scientist. Think of an avalanche that comes down a mountain. Right. It, snow. Right. Well, in this time, it's soil, but underwater. It's Got an it. avalanche in the water. And that okay. can set off a huge now, tsunami. Magnitude 8.9. This was yeah. huge. I mean, th this is just right up there at the top of the list. The fact that this happened, does that give you a clue? I mean, you, you, we've been studying this. We have buoys everywhere. We, we put a lot of money, as we should, into trying to figure out when and whether these disasters occur. What do we know about the likelihood of a well, recurrence? You have to distinguish between once the earthquake occurs, then we have predictability of what the tsunami will be. Right. But when the earthquake will occur, that's earthquake prediction, and that still doesn't work. It doesn't work? No. But that is what now that is what people want because in California we do have major fault lines. You're saying with, we can't track the way these tectonic plates are moving, the way the pressure is built. Can we measure the pressure between the two plates we to see what it builds? We know how the plates move. We know how much stress has built up. But when it goes, when it breaks, is still with associated with very high uncertainty. So we can make long-term forecasts that have been made, for instance, for California faults like right. the San Andreas fault, that there's such and such a probability over the next 30 years. Mm -hmm. But that's not a prediction. That's a channel forecast so you can put more uh, money, for instance, to fixing up bridges or mm -hmm. certain things in that part that has a higher probability than compared to one that has a lower probability.